Well, hey, YouTube, Petey Two Finger here. If you if you pay attention, if you've been hanging around here for a while, you know that every once in a while I will do a soup review. It's something that is easy for me to prepare. It's you pop the can, put it on the stovetop, set the burner on five, set the the timer on 10 minutes I can come back and watch a YouTube video and by the time that's ready I have a healthy and nutritious sodium packed lunch uh, that'll hold me over till 3 or 4 a.m. when I eat my dinner so today we're going to be taking our spoons and diving deep into the chef's covered chunky grilled chicken and sausage gumbo this is indeed a Aldi brand knockoff soup. So this is available for, uh, it's under $2. I think it was like $1.79 or was it $89? It might have been $1.89, which is way more than I like to spend on soup. So this soup is something that I will eat uh, half of the can one day. I add water to it. Not a real lot of water, but I find that it's too thick. It really is. It's all. It's almost like. Um, that, could you add a little water to that? Done. So prepared stovetop instructions: empty soup in the pan, heat, stirring occasionally. Do not boil. For the microwave, you empty the contents into a microwave safe bowl, microwave on high for three and a half minutes and you've got to stir it. So there's a massive list of ingredients. Water, grilled white chicken meat, chicken, white meat, water, modified cornstarch. Why do they have water twice in here? Isolated soy protein. Hmm, there's soy protein. Rice, there's a lot of rice in it. Diced tomatoes, tomato juice, and then we've got uh, andouille sausage with smoke floor flavor added, pork, less than 2% of spices, hydrolyzed soy, sugar, garlic powder, a bunch of other. There is so many spices in here. There's celery, tomato paste, gumbo. There is something called gumbo. I don't know what that is. Red bell peppers, green bell peppers, contains less than 1% modified starch, rendered chicken fat, dehydrated onions, yeast extract, sugar, natural flavor, potato, mexodithran, corn, mexodithran, caramel color, onion powder, dehydrated garlic spices, and paprika contains soy. So this is uh, serving size one cup. It's about two cups per container. Uh, we have 120 servings, 120... <laughs> if you're a mouse 120 calories per serving per container 270 calories total fat is uh, four grams uh, what do I read on here that's important um, uh, carbs and sugar total carbs is 16 grams total sugars is two grams so is this really bad for me 14 grams protein per can. So yes, this chicken gumbo is, I remember having it when I was a kid. I stayed home from school, or it might have been a summer, but my mom produced a can of this Campbell's brand, which was rare. I don't remember eating much Campbell's soup. We always had it off-brand, and uh, which was fine. I always appreciated my mom being thrifty, even though my dad had a really good job. He was regional man manager for the entire Midwest for Volvo, parts manager. And then later on, he did that same job for BMW. But yeah, I had this chicken gumbo with my mom. She was like, I don't know about this chicken gumbo. She must have got it marked down or something. I don't know. But she was really hesitant about it. And I was really young. I was like three or four. And this is one of my early, I don't have many early memories. I, man, this is good soup. The idea of a soup that had the word gum in it, gumbo. 
I immediately went up. I'm like, yeah, give me some of that. And if you've never had chicken gumbo, it's a spicy chicken soup. But this is not spicy in the way that, like, my wife ate it. And she was fine with it. So this is using this is utilizing all kinds of spices, but not really much heat. And the sausage is what she didn't care for. But it's a very flavorful soup. It's a good flavor. It's if you've never had gumbo, it's a chicken soup with rice. It's um, it's reddish. Here, I'll try to try to show you. It doesn't look that great in the picture, but it tastes good. This is really good soup. Now, the turnoff that I had with it is the andouille sausage. It's a very unusual flavor. I don't know what andouille sausage is and I don't want to know. If it's French, it probably has something to do with a tortured animal or a duck. Something I don't want to know what it is. Or something's private parts. Now, I've... Oh my goodness. I'm a grandpa. Sue. Hello. Nothing genetics happened yet, of course. Okay. My daughter's at the hospital giving birth. So, I believe I did another, my first soup review. Yeah. And boy, am I proud of that video. <clears throat> Is a gumbo soup. I forgot what brand that was. It was Cam Campbell's Jamaican Jerk and Chicken was my first one. It wasn't gumbo. And if you're a fan of what I do on this channel and you have not watched the Campbell's Jamaican Jerkin' Chicken Soup Review, man, you're missing out on one of my better videos. I, uh, I tell stories for like an hour <laughs> and I never eat the soup. But it's, I really thought it was an entertaining video. I think I tell three great stories in it. Man, this is good soup. Um, good for a hangover, too. You know, the Mexicans. Can I say that without being racist? Am I supposed to say Spaniard Americans? Uh, anyway, the Mexicans have menudo, which is a spicy soup. And they'll make that, I think on Sunday morning is the tradition. And so traditionally you get wasted on Saturday night. Drink of the tequila, smoke of the coquinos, you know, that whole thing. And then you've got hell to pay Sunday morning. But there's still plenty of knifing, stabbing to do. <laughs> Beheading. So you have the menudo, which is a spicy soup. And that, um, I can attest... I've had gumbo uh, for a hangover, and uh, man, does it work. See, now I'm getting a little bit of heat off this. I wonder where that's coming from, because it wasn't in the rest of the soup. It didn't seem to be. Now, again, what I do to prepare this, and this is the secret with this soup, It's got the quick pull, the junky, hippie style pull tab for super lazy people that don't want to use that thing that puts a dent in your palm that you feel until you die. It hurts so bad if you touch it. Those can openers. Um, you, you dump it in the pan. Mm, man, this is so good. The weird thing with the soup is, 
I not I can't think of what would go with it. Like I wouldn't want to dip bread in this or have crackers and butter. Like just this, and then uh, ice cold milk is what I like to have with it. It would be good with lemonade or a Coke. It'd be really good with a Coke. So you pour it in the pan, and then you get a small plate, and you start digging through the soup till you find the sausages. You want to get all those sausages on your plate and then use a paring knife and start cutting uh, in rows as small as you can. I'm not talking about like half a millimeter, but like two, two millimeter uh, cuts. And then you go back the other way and you end up with a whole lot of little chunks of the andouille sausage that make sense. So you're not having to take a bite of that and having that overwhelming taste because it is kind of weird. The, um, some of the other, that, like that Jamaican jerk soup, man, that's really good too, the Campbell's Jamaican jerk. It has a, a flavor to it that makes me think of dark purple, like a tamarind color or one of those. Uh, Mexican peppers that you see in the bag at the supermercado. For some reason I could not put my finger on this flavor in that soup. And this has a little bit of that too, but it's not as intense in this. It's much more uh, subtle. And I would say as far as some people saying that's too much for me it's too spicy I don't like that you might run into that with that Jamaican jerk Campbell's it's it, it really is a kind of out there whereas this is milder but it's this is a very good soup I have to say out of everything they have at Aldi's this is the best soup they have at Aldi's by so far. That the, the chicken noodle that they have, the big chicken noodle, it's all right. It's just kind of, that's really bland soup. And those giant chunks of chicken, that's a turn off for me. I honestly, with those, I really prefer it if you do the same thing with that. Take that meat out and chop it up. Because it, that's ridiculous having three big giant pieces of chicken in there. Break it up a little bit, you know. So yeah, the chef's covered grilled chicken and sausage gumbo soup from Aldi's. Double thumbs up. This is a really enjoyable soup. Definitely, uh, if you like spicy stuff and you you go to Aldi's, do yourself a favor and grab four cans of it because this isn't going to be uh, an everyday thing there. Aldi's brings stuff in and then it's gone and you'll wait for a year and maybe it'll come back seasonal items uh, and if if I'm wrong well you got four cans of the best soup they sell in the house you gotta thank me for that all right thank you so much again uh, check out the Jamaican jerk chicken review uh, working on new material I've got uh, two songs that we did uh, I made drum parts for with sound effects and uh, I'm really proud of both of those songs. The one comes from a chord shape heard in Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box, is what I ripped that off. But it kind of sounds like Psycho Dots uh, song at one part, the way we play it. Uh, Donna uses a fuzz bass, and I got her playing through Pink Jimmy Photon's Corpulent Cajones pedal that he shipped over here for me to try out. And uh, we're doing another one, which there was a lot of arguing and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth when I showed her what the bass line is. She kind of freaked out because she had to learn it. And normally she just does it, but this part's a little bit more complicated. And my part is hard to play. So... Yeah, 
pushing myself a little bit, I should do that, right? I should write songs that are just beyond my reach and then get better instead of just being at the same level. So we got those two. I spent a heck of a lot of time working on the files for the drums. Uh, but I got more work ahead of me. We, I wrote three songs today. Uh, sitting here with the guitar watching Welcome to Plathville, which is a show about a religious family that have 1,100 children. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please check out the Campbell's Jamaican Jerk and Chicken. And good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Special thanks to David Vas... I can't say your last name. Vasquez? Vasquez? David Vasquez. Velasquez? David Velasquez. Special thanks to David Velasquez for going way out of his way to photo... Uh, he ran a PDF through his printer, printed out a document that I needed. It was a... Uh, I'm in the middle of a lawsuit, and I needed some uh, legal things taken care of. David, uh, I don't have a printer. So after the arrest, he helped me out with the uh, photocopying for the uh, petty theft and shoplifting lawsuits. That, no, I'm kidding. It's a diagram for a pedal. So he went way out of his way. Didn't have stamps. Um... It was a hassle for him, and I just wanted to tell him, I know how much of a hassle it is going to the post office. So uh, he photocopied that or printed it and folded it up and mailed it to me. We had to go get the stamps. So I owe you one, and I really wanted to let you know how much I appreciated that. Uh, so I hid this at the end of a soup review. All right, David, thank you so much, and I'll, I'll talk to you soonish. I, I, it's, it's happening. I'm going to be a grandpa tonight. So send your uh, cards and letters and good thoughts and good vibes because we want that baby to be healthy so he can join the boys club, which is me and Kita. He sits here and we watch Star Wars. And I to try to interpret the plot to him, explaining to him <gasps> who's a gilly guy who wants treats. <laughs> That's the every character's motivation is they either have the treats or they want the treats. Okay, my last goodbye. I promise. Peace. <laughs>